Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is coming from a dream that I had. First, I'll tell you the dream. And this dream was a factory where I worked. And, honey, turn that fan a little bit because I know it's like affecting the sound so it don't hit the camera. Um, the factory where I worked, there um, came in this particular person who was supposed to be really tough. And he had a name that he was tough. And um, everybody sort of bowed down to him. And he was supposed to come in, and he was um, he was always in tur turmoil. He was upset. He was pushing his weight around continually, pushing his weight around, and bully this person, bully that person. And I looked at him, and he was when he came in, he was his not very big fellow at all. Matter of fact, I was quite a bit bigger than he was and came into the to the factory there where I worked and man everybody was oh you better not mess with this guy and he was they was like don't get him upset and then you know everything like that so um, he had did his thing in the factory what he was going to do and and I looked at him when he was there and he had uh, he had like a very very young person's face not real young, but he was like maybe 24, maybe about five foot seven. You know, looked like he might have weighed 160 pounds or something like that. He wasn't a very big fella at all. A little bit stocky build, but not very big. Nothing to be afraid of in the in the natural that I could see. And I looked at his eyes, and in his in his eyes were weakness, not not just weakness of a person but weakness of the spirit not weakness of the body but weak in the spirit I mean you could tell he was intimidated by everything that he's that he saw he couldn't command it or whatever so he he lashed out against it and and, and I saw him and I looked and I said to myself this is this fellow is not strong on the inside I could tell <laughs> I could tell I said there's within myself I said there's something wrong with this fella that making him act the way that he does and so he left and he called back and he was talking I was on one line and he was talking to the boss and and uh, I was saying I was like holding the phone away and I didn't know that he could hear me and I said I said boss I said what I said the problem with this fellow is he's spoiled. I said, nobody tells him no. You know? And he heard me. And he says, what did you say? What did you say? And I told him. I said, nobody tells you no. I said, the pro I said your problem is that all of your life, nobody has ever tried to train you. And I'm telling these things, these attributes of God, and then the, and the dream was over. And I woke up and I thought, how, how America is so like this. America has raised child after child after child. We now have a generation of, of kids that are just like this fella. They expect everything to and work for nothing. When, and when they don't get it, they abuse you. They abuse your parents. I have a grandson whom I love who is just like this. Took my $300 plus dollar telephone $400, my wife is saying $400 or $500, and was an iPod phone. Uh, don't ask me which model, I forget, but it's a real nice phone. iPhone 4. 4, the iPhone 4. Took it, lost it, sold it, had it for weeks. I'm calling him up, where's my phone? Oh, I brought that back, he said. I surely would have remembered if somebody had brought back a four or five hundred dollar telephone, you know, I think I would have remembered that. And <clears throat> and he works but he doesn't he has no responsibility. I signed for him a car and he reneged on the car. Uh, just just lucky me, I was in the process of filing a 
a, a bankruptcy at the time, which I was forced into by because of uh, health issues, my wife and I both. And but you know I I can't file any bankruptcy on this phone. But and, and I've never done it before. And, and most likely I will never do it again. I'll never have a need. You know, it was a special need thing. But anyway, America, uh, you know, some Americans make a living off of filing bankruptcy. Every seven years, right on time, they'll file bankruptcy. You know, companies that are like that, people, they're just so spoiled. There's people on Wall Street that make uh, thousands and thousands of dollars, some per minute, some per hour, some per day. And there's a lot of people that go there and lose money, but this system has brought America to a place of being spoiled. You go over and you read uh, Revelations 12, I think it is, about the mystery Babylon. It's ex this place is exactly everything that is expressed there. This fellow came from to our church yesterday from Uganda, and he says, he says in Uganda, he says some people have no addresses over there they have a a little hut doesn't have an address he says don't bother writing them a letter because they won't get it and he says other people in the, his country you could write a letter and it'll take uh, three I think he said three months two months or three months it was a couple of months anyway and I talked to him a little bit outside of the church afterwards and I told him about this fellow from Kenya who works at our factory and how the conditions are so different and you know I remember when I was a kid you know we we almost didn't have an address we had to drive into town to get our mail you know uh, well we had to drive like half a mile to pick up our mail <laughs> that just don't happen anywhere today in America you know that I know of and um, when my mom was a kid, everybody went to the post office. You know, we have just progressed so much in America that we have become a spoiled brat before God. How can God, um, how can God bless a spoiled brat? You know, I mean, I don't know any parent that would do that. Go out and buy him, well, pa ignorant parents. God's not ignorant. People go out and buy their children of uh, new cars and new this is and uh, new bedrooms and new clothes, new shoes and that they look at and go, that's all you got me. Spoiled, rotten brats that nobody says no to. Unless you need to take that child to the bedroom every once in a while and close the door, put pillows under the in the cracks of the room so nobody can hear the screams while you're beating his rear end. You know what? They need to say no. And this is why the, the people of today, if you go to these um, uh, modern day mega churches, they're called, the, the majority of the people in those churches are very young people. We got here one here in town that um, we, we've been to before, and probably 80% of their people that go there is... 25, 26, and younger. That's where they're going. The spoiled generation of today is going to those places. As soon as they get out from under their mama's skirt, they know that they know they believe in God. They, but they go, they go where they're more free to believe that it's okay to sin. It's okay to be spoiled. Listen, the Bible tells us in the book of Re Revelations, to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne. That, that is that if you're an overcomer in your heart towards sin, you will be allowed to get into the, the, the kingdom of God. Jesus said like this, if, if I give you a talent and you waste it, you'll be cast into outer darkness. You'll be cast into outer darkness. All those people who they're preaching blessing to today will never see any blessing because they've been lied to. They don't have what it takes to get there to receive that blessing. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Another good message right here across in the middle ministry.